good, and most importantly, timer is good. Okay. All right, good evening, y'all. My name is Jacob Moody, and we're going to tell you about the Northern Bank Roast and Boast. Thank y'all for staying till the end. I know it's been a long evening, especially sitting back there waiting to come up here. But we appreciate your patience. So when I first saw the time for this class, six to nine, I knew I was going to drink a lot of coffee. And ironically, my whole semester was revolving around coffee with Paradise Dark and Boast. <clears throat> my apologies. The Northern Bank Roast and Boast. So before I answer the question that I know is burning in all of your minds, what exactly is a roast and boast, I'd like to introduce my team. Like I mentioned, I'm Jacob Moody. I was the team leader. Uh, I'm Elizabeth Allen. Uh, I was in charge of accounting and the budget. I'm Chelsea Real, and I mainly handle the public relations. And I'm Pat Lassau, and I was communications. So what is a roast and boast? Well, it's a celebration of the local community. Northrop Jenks motto is 100% 907. And we set out to prove that. Normally, the facet of the community that we focus on is coffee. This year, we have a unique opportunity to expand into bakeries and teas for the community. So once again, like I said, we saw a lot of involvement from the community. We got a bakery to show up and a tea table from North Pole Coffee Roasters. And what essentially they did was they got to get into the bank, set up a table, and provide samples to the community. But 150 for bank scenes showed up that evening and strengthened the bond between them and the community. Now, before I get too much detail about the event, Pat's going to give us a little bit of details behind the scenes. <laughs> so, talking about communication, we had four main groups of people to communicate with in the project those being the Northern Bank members, um, our own group members. We had the clients to communicate with, and then lastly was Tammy herself. We had to bring a lot of stuff through her. And so, starting off, we have Northern Bank communication. It's important to note that they're the ones putting on the event. I know we put it together, and it's kind of our thing, you know. But in the end, it's Northern's face, and it's Northern's business, and they're putting themselves out there, and all the clients attending the event. So, it's really important to bring everything through Northern Bank before we actually do anything at all. Um, we need to make sure that they're okay with it and that we can go through with it. They were also a large resource for <coughs> information and recommendations. This isn't the first year that the Northern Roast and Boast has been put on. This is the fourth year, I believe, in a row, or the fifth year in a row that they've been doing it. So they have a lot of experience and there's a lot of tips to go along with it. And they helped us out a lot with that. Um, the main way we stayed communicated with the Northrend Bank members was through email and phone call. And that is actually going to move me on to group member communication. We also had to do our own email and our own group communication within the group. I do want to note that the most important thing with group communication is that you may know what you're doing. We had our own, we all had our own assigned roles. So you may know what you're doing, but the group doesn't know how far along in your project you are. And so it's really important to let everybody know what's going on. And so we had tons of emails, tons of texts, and tons of phone calls throughout the whole ordeal to make sure everybody was caught up and brought up to speed. Um, if I'm the one taking care of t-shirts, which these t-shirts, by the way, um, I need to make sure that the logos are on it. Um, Trademark, who we ended up getting t-shirts from, is going to get them ordered on time. I need to know the price. I need to get the invoice. I need to get all that stuff. And I also had to let my group members know where I was in the process. That way they're not freaking out the day of the event, wondering where the t-shirts are. They'll know when they're gonna show up, and so it's really important to let everybody know what's going on there. Um, to stay communicated with each other in more detail, we use Google Drive like most groups have, it's awesome. And we had all of our documents submitted there. We use a group text to kind of do quick communication and make sure everybody's on the same page. And we also did solo text just in case somebody didn't show up. Jake would give a quick phone call or solo text to see where they are. <clears throat> Moving on, we had client communication. This was a really important one because we had to make sure that clients showed up to the event and donated product. Um, it happened fairly, fairly quickly. There wasn't too much to tell the clients. We just had to make sure they knew where they were going and where to be once at the event. And this is where we had to put a lot of trust into the clients because we didn't have a say in what they were going to bring. Um, so we put a lot of trust into them that they were going to bring really good product, which they did. 
Um, we actually had Great Harvest who brought free samples of their bread, which was delicious, by the way. And we had McCafferty also show up, and they had a really delicious um, fudge fudge drink. I don't know how to explain it other than it was, Chocolate. you drink the fudge. <laughs> drink the fudge. <laughs> yeah, you drink the fudge. Yeah. <laughs> and that was delicious, so. That's it. The That's other the thing with the right clients, there. too, is it wasn't just the people bringing the product. We also had to figure out who was bringing the microphones, who was getting the tables, how we were getting flyers, who we were getting the banners from. We had to get all that taken care of. And that goes back to group communication and who's going to go to these separate vendors to figure out who's going to bring what. And in the end, it just it's really important to make sure everybody's on the same page with this kind of stuff. Lastly, we have communication with Cami, and she was sort of our saving grace. Um, she, so big thanks to her beforehand, but um, she kind of made sure we were in line, and she also made sure that we knew what we were doing before we went, in, we went into things. So to give kind of an overview of how our week went, we found a meeting time on Sunday where we would get together and make sure everybody knew what they were doing for the week, who they were going to talk to, what they were going to get done. Monday, we had a client meeting with the Northern Bank, um, being Jay Blurry and Jared Sherry. And that's where we had our one hour conversation before class to kind of update them on what's going on, ask them if they want anything new, and to kind of ask them for recommendations on how to move forward. And beforehand, we had to send Tammy our agendas, because it was up to us to create the agendas for the meeting. And she kind of looked things over and made sure that we went in professionally because this was it was a business meeting it was a business client meeting that we did over the phone with Northern Bank and so she just didn't want to or she wanted to make sure that we went in looking great because as Bill has shown if you're not on top of things you're going to get roasted so <laughs> so big thanks to Tammy she was a great backup and as well as Northern Bank she had a lot of recommendations and tips on how to do things so moving on we'll give it over to Chelsea Alrighty. As you know, my name is Chelsea, and I handle mainly the public relations portion. So first, you have an event, but no one's going to come to it unless they know it exists. So we did this by creating the marketing mix and figuring out who exactly was our target market. As you know, the marketing mix is the magical four B. First off was our price. Our price was actually our budget for the event given to us by the Northern Bank people we worked with, mainly Jay Blurry. And so we had to make sure that we remained in that budget when creating the event because that would be not very good if we went over that price mark. The next part was the product. The product was the Roast and Roast. It is an event to where the Northern Bank can give back to the community and make connections with different vendors and partners. After that, we had to get out the word of the event, which was done with promotion. We had four main media that we used which was the radio. As you can see, there's a picture of Jake. We went downtown with me, Tammy, Tom Bartell, and for those of you who don't know, he is the owner of North Pole Coffee Roasters. And what we did is that they basically had a radio interview where we would tell them what the most and most is and give them like time, event, and location. We also sent out emails through the UAF Cornerstone, or for those of you who don't know, don't know, it's an event email that UAS sends out to all like employees and students who are on the mailing list. And so we use that to get that out to UAF members. We also made flyers, which me and my group mates then distributed to the partners and then around campus. And lastly, we did a newspaper ad. And this is kind of important because Jay, who we worked with, was very adamant against it. But as some of you may know, Fairbanks isn't exactly like normal other places. A large, a large portion of our target market still read, reads the newspaper, and so even though some people might not thought it was a good idea, a lot of people actually found out because of the newspaper ad that we placed. Which then brings us to our target market. So as Joy, Jay informed us, their target market was 30 to 60 year olds. This is usually because at that age, people are well established and financially stable. And it was particularly important for this year because we had a goal to try and open up new bank accounts at the Roast and Boast. And we actually reached that goal and we opened five new bank accounts 
which our original goal was one, so we achieved 500% on <laughs> It's pretty impressive. Anyways, I will now hand it off to lovely Liz, who will talk about our amazing budget. Okay, so the North Room Bank gave us $6,000 to cover all of our expenses. So that ranges anything from the tables, to the flyers, to the t-shirts, it's, it's all inclusive. So what's uh, unique about the Northern Bank situation is that they already have a marketing and an advertising company that they work with whenever they're doing promotions. So they usually cost about $2,000, uh, that's usually a $2,000 chunk of the budget that we get for the Roast and Boast. So, um, so that was something that we had to be aware of and keep in mind. So even though we did have $6,000, which sounds like a lot for the event, at least $2,000 of it was already earmarked for Spawn Ideas, the advertising company. So let's get to the implementation. So we, the first thing we did, I set up a budget in Excel to create an estimated budget, and so I put that on the left-hand side. So basically what we did there was we took all of the information from last year's, how much each line item cost, and we listed those out under different headings so we could keep an idea of you know, what types of things we're purchasing. And that way we had a rough idea of how much things should cost this year. And then, of course, on the right-hand side, we made an actual budget, so every time we got a new invoice or we were completely certain, that we were going to be charged X amount, we would go ahead and list that there as well. So that way we kept track of those, and in the same shared drive folder, we also kept copies of the invoices that we were able to get a hold of. So that way we had some backup. No, we did have an unexpected event this time around with Spawn Ideas. What happened was, because there were so many changes with this year's Roast and Boast, with that new program of trying to open bank accounts, because that was such a big promotion that was going on, we had to completely redesign the flyers, um, and of course we had a bunch of different vendors. Uh, we had some new vendors, we had some vendors leave, so we also had to redesign the t-shirts. Um, so these and, and other reasons caused the spawn advertising cost to be much, much higher this year, which would have taken up a, a very significant portion of our budget, like about two-thirds. So. Um, we were advised to cap it at 2,500, which was the cost of small advertising last year, and that left us with $3,500 for the rest of the event. And we did come in under budget, so that was that was a plus. Uh, I will now hand it off back to Jake again. Alrighty, so we've talked about setting up for the event, advertising, and paying for it. We got on the big, right? <laughs> Not quite. As I'm sure all of you know, nothing ever goes off without a hitch around here up in Fairbanks. And our event was no exception. The first hurdle we kind of had to pass was coordinating ourselves. As Pat hinted at, we had a really great communication system. But I, for one, am a full-time student or a part-time job. I was deployed to the field not once, but twice on three-day exercises with the Army. So it was a little bit of a hassle. And though they never complained, I know I had one of the lighter schedules this semester for my group. However, everyone sacrificed a little bit. We met at least once a week for the duration of the semester to make sure everything got done. We thought we were busy. Now we had to work with business owners who have a bottom line to run. Although they were never difficult to work with and they always gave us their undivided attention when we asked for it, we wanted to make sure that we weren't sacrificing their time more than we had to. Fortunately, we got everything set up. And then, about a week out, we had a couple of vendors, not vendors, partners, have to drop out. At one point, we were literally down to two partners, Cabbage Cafe and North Pole Coffee Roasting. However, Great Harvest Bread Company jumped in right away to provide us with a slicing table. North Pole Coffee gave us a tea table, which was a huge outlook that opens up a whole new field of cafes, I suppose, for us to look into. So a big thanks to them for adapting to our challenges and helping us out. We got everyone there about an hour before the event set up. We helped our partners set up their tables. We had all of our vendors show up even earlier than that to make sure products were ready to go. And I actually have a slide for that. 
they're helping me out. <laughs> and our first customer walked in just as we were beginning. Our first customer, Rick, by Winston Sack. <laughs> he opened up the vent for us. So now on to the deceptively difficult task of greeting. Liz is going to talk to us about how that one <laughs> All right, so the greeting itself is fairly simple, but there were a couple tricks involved. Um, basically, we had two greeters assigned at the entrance slash exit at all times. Um, so we had each greeter had a clicker. So basically, they could keep count of how many people are walking in and how many people are walking out. Um, so for on one hand, you know that's pretty useful for us because at the end of the night, we were able to come up with a total and have an idea of about how many people attended the event all told. But it also helped us keep a good idea of how many people were currently in the building at any given time. That might not sound like such a big deal, but given the popularity of the Roast and Boast, it's actually in a pretty small venue. The Northern Bank has is a pretty small location there, so we needed to keep an idea of how many people were in the building at any given time for liability reasons. We didn't want to go over capacity. And with that, I will pass it over to Pat. So the other part of the event was atmosphere. It's really important to keep people engaged. If you think about it, they really had no incentive to stay at the event once they got their product. There was the big line and there was really great product and if you wanted to, you could open an account. But after that, there was nothing left for them to do because when you sign up for the prizes, you would submit all your information. So we would call you if you want a prize. And so it was really important for us to go around and stay engaged and talk to people, really get them involved in the event. Um, not only does it keep people there and excited and happy at the event, but it's also great networking skills for yourself, too. As weird as it might sound, it's good practice to talk to strangers. I know growing up, you're not supposed to talk to strangers, but <laughs> it's really good practice for yourself to go out and network yourself and start conversations with people you don't know. Um, it was a great source of information as well, too, to find out how people heard about the event. That's how I actually heard about the newspaper, the, the physical newspaper app being a good source of, or a good source of how people found out about the event. So, so we found out about that. And we move on. Okay. All right. Now to the best part: the raffling of the prizes. So unfortunately, we could not hold Oprah and tell everyone to look under the seats at the end of the event and go, "There are the prizes. Make up." Instead, we had to implement a plan on when to give out the prizes, and we did this by having them raffled at um, 20 minute increments. And so when the prizes were raffled, we would have the, basically the partner who was giving away the prize go up for a little bit, talk about the company, and then they, we would go ahead and then draw the prizes for them. As well, since the partners gave so much to our community, we wanted to give back to them. And so we did this by making customized thank you gifts. These included hand-drawn gift cards by us that were customized for each of the companies and took design elements from each of the logos and then we tailored that to them. We also made them mugs, which unfortunately we did not have a picture of, and we also made them homemade goodies because they're always making goodies for everyone else and we really wanted to show them how much we appreciated having them come there and give away their goods and so we did that for them. So what did it do for us? Well, first off, it was a great resume builder. Now we can say that we help market and run an event with Northrum Bank, an established company, and that is pretty awesome. Also, it gave us references. Jay said that we could add them as a reference if we needed them for if we get hired by a new job company. As well, it gave us real life business experience. It showed us how the logistics and meetings go, and it also taught us how to implement a marketing strategy in real life. So that's pretty neat when you get to see what you learned in class actually implemented. And lastly, it was a great experience and we made some great connections and new friends. Participants or 150 guests 
in there. Do you have any idea what the previous years were? Uh, about 150. So it was similar. And I just, my eyeball, thought that was the case, having been there all, all the years. Um, there are four coffee roasters in Fairbanks, Alaska, and two of them showed up this year, and you addressed that. Um, can you expand on your feelings about the fact that only 50% of roasters in Fairbanks showed up for the roast at most? Uh, Chelsea's got this pair. <laughs> <laughs> so, unfortunately, they were actually busy. ACRC, who usually participates in the roast boast, was actually gone down sponsoring one of the NASA, NASCAR races. Formula. And, formula, 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 formula yeah. sorry. So, Formula One races. And so, I think that's a pretty legitimate reason not to be there. And so, we didn't really have any hard feelings, even though it made our lives a little bit more difficult. But we understand that implementing these things in the real world, sometimes there are going to be hurdles that we have to overcome. And so basically we're like, bummer, let's try and find someone else. So in that same vein, do you have any idea of how you might attract myself, and I will say strategically placed my competitors to be at this event? It's a really great way to market themselves. And we actually did have, or we contacted three or four, I believe, new vendors, and they're all really excited, but they just couldn't make it to the event, too. So, But I want to stress it is called Roast and Boast. So we're yeah. coffee roasters, and there's only four of us yeah. in Fairbanks. So time. when you let them know that they get to speak at an event with 150 or so people, and they get to kind of boast about their, their business, is really. I very much value the concept of networking. Back, to be honest with you, that's why I'm here right now. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that needs to be educated to, to folks, the concept of networking. Even if you don't sell something, you network. Um, sitting right here next to me, you all have heard of Wes Madden. He's a champion networker, by all means, by God. Um, Uh, the media that was used, you said newspaper was, I think somebody said newspaper was most noticed by us crusty old Fairbanksons. Um, that's where I saw, that's the media I noticed it in. What what other, what radio stations were used and what other things were? So we went to iHeartRadio and I believe it was Kayak FM. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually Liz Allen heard a radio ad at our work. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry, what was the last thing you said? Oh, I, I heard the radio ad Did while I uh, while I okay. was at work. I got to hear the radio ad. Okay. So that was pretty well, cool. Well, good. Well, and then what's the other one we did? It was on an AM. was on an AM station. Okay. With who? Do you guys remember? Sports or talk? Sports or talk? Two kinds. <laughs> two talking two, two talk at news stations and one sports. Oh, wait, KJ. Well, it wasn't sports. And I also wanted to add that the custom handmade gift cards you gave us, I cherish them very much. And I do just step and clarify, Chelsea gives way too much credit as a group for that. That was primarily her effort. All right, <laughs> Chelsea, <laughs> thank you very much. <laughs> and now here's my friend Bill. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, don't, and don't be intimidated. And Chase was questions. there too, so he's coming at you from all. Don't like be intimidated by Bill and don't take it personally because he's one of my bankers. I know one of when I went to get him a loan, he said, Bill, you want a loan? I'll leave you alone. <laughs> He's also a drummer. <laughs> so I, I will yield if other people have questions. I kind of do want to go last, so if you guys want to okay. slam them first. Students? <laughs> so you were under budget for the advertising? How much? Um, all total? Like, we weren't just under just for the advertising. Uh, we came under budget by several hundred dollars. So fiscally speaking, you could afford recycled bins. Oh, <laughs> oh very nice. <laughs> um, were you guys responsible for finding the door prizes, or was that just from the partners? We were responsible for contacting the companies who would provide the door prizes. And so like the grand prize, for example, was an auto start. And in previous years, it was either done by Auto Chim or Street Sounds. And so I contacted Auto Chim and they politely declined. And then after that, I had to contact Street Sounds, which luckily they were like, yeah, let's do it. And so then I, we then had to make sure that the bank got the invoice from them and then therefore made sure they made the payment on the auto start. Because so. it was, explain, it wasn't donated, it was part yeah, of the Yeah, it wasn't donated, so it was given to us at a reduced Price, so we didn't have to pay for it at you know 
actual listing price, and so then therefore we're still saving money, but then we're still providing a grand prize for some lucky winner. And did you guys market to Northrum customers, or were you primarily trying to reach out to new people? So part of the emails, which I forgot to mention, that's my fault, they were actually sent by Northrum Bank employees to their customer base, because as we found out from Dolores, not a lot of their customers actually come into the branch, and they do most of their banking online. And so she sent out the email to them to reach that market, and then we sent out the cornerstone to reach the UAF community. Because even though their target market was mainly primarily 30 to 60 year olds, we're not gonna turn away anyone who comes out the door. I would like to also add that um, uh, existing members of Northrum Bank, if they brought friends in with them as part of the promotion, they would also receive Alaska Air Miles. So the person who opened the account got Alaska Air Miles, and so did the person recommending. So it made sense to market to Northrum customers as well. Okay. Uh, once again, I think it was a great event. Uh, you guys impressed me with your ability to adapt to the fact that you had two, uh, two companies drop out. That's not insignificant. Also, uh, you got to work with real marketing people. That's a huge deal. Those guys are sad at this. Jay and Jared, seriously. That's, I mean, Bitchy does not even begin to like, encompass how they get when things don't go their way. I can tell you, inside baseball, they're very impressed with how it went. They were very pleased. Uh, and again, it's it's marketing. So on some level, you know, you're able to quantify how many people were there, how many accounts were open. That's what was important to the bank, at least. Um, it was important to me too. Right. Yeah. <laughs> For me, well, at the end of the day, the, the more the, the more important, broader aspect of why Northrum's involved in this, obviously, is it's the qualitative. It's the networking piece. You know, people that weren't aware of what the bank offered and what our clients offered and what coffee roasters in general offer. Uh, it's just, and it was, it's a great environment. And you're right, you did have to work with constraints. You had a real budget to work with. That's important. Um, the fact that you also then had the realities of, by the way, there's fire code. How many people can be in the building at any given moment? Because I know that in prior years, in the summertime, uh, the bank, this is before I worked there, um, we would have an ice cream social and the problem with that is that in July, when it's hot, people will come for free ice cream, not a problem. Alaskans love ice cream. <laughs> problem is when you get people packed into a building and you're violating the fire code. So that's a real thing. Um, you had a lot of stuff going on. If I had to offer any gentle criticism, it'll be, it's very simple. Jake is a natural, good opener. That's fine. You guys are very friendly. You all communicated. Very conversational tone. If I have to give you one particular thing, if you work ever in, as a marketing team again, you work on your transitions. Your segues were a little, little kind of like, and by the way, here's so and so. <laughs> That's all. I'm just looking for a little more of an outro and intro into the next one. I wasn't quite clear when we were we were turning. We're to to yeah, well, <laughs> there was a little whiplash. That's what, that's all I'll say. Um, other than that, though, good energy. I, I really do enjoy a conversational tone, and it's tough. And I'm, this is for everybody here. Um, the thing is, they kind of hit it for marketing students. Outside of everything we talked about, you guys are in class. You're in this class is because you're supposed to make yourselves more valuable. If you make yourselves more valuable, that's fine, you can be valuable, but if you can't communicate it because you're afraid to talk to people, you're at a supreme disadvantage because there will be somebody else out there that has talked to more people than you, they've gotten shot down, they've gotten told that they're idiots, they've been told to go pound sand, but they've got to done it again and again. You get used to that. You get used to hearing the jargon, the lingo, being around the people that one day you want to work with, and it's going to be that much easier for you to network into the job that you're eventually going to have. Ultimately, that's where your value lay, is finding out what people need by listening to what they are telling you and communicating to them effectively how you can deliver it in a way that they will understand. So that was good. I thought that was, I think that is at the heart of marketing is finding out who the demographic is, locking them down, and communicating with them in a way that's valuable to both parties. Not just making a sale. Anybody can go sell cars. Marketing is a lot deeper than that. So well done.